What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another rendering video for you. So usually on this channel I talk about creating 3D models in SketchUp. Occasionally I will talk about rendering. I broke most of that off onto my rendering channel just so those of you that only wanted to learn about SketchUp didn't have to um, see all the rendering videos showing up here. I wanted to make an exception in this case because there's a great real-time rendering program that's free for a limited time. So I've partnered up with the guys over at Epic Games, and I wanted to get the uh, I wanted to get the word out about this because literally there's no reason why you shouldn't download this and try it out. It's a great program from Epic Games called Twin Motion, and it's basically a real time rendering program, meaning you can actually bring your models in from SketchUp and create a rendering really quickly without having to mess with a whole bunch of complicated settings or anything like that. So, um, like I said, Twin Motion is free through late November. So the first thing you should do is you should go download that and I will walk you through where to get it and how to install it on your computer. So follow the link in the notes down below in order to download Twin Motion and get it on your computer and then come back and I'll show you where to go from there. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so when you follow the link in the notes down below, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take you to this page. This page is going to be the Twin Motion introduction page. And really quick, I wanted to walk you through what's available um, and kind of what the deal is. So if you scroll down, or when you first open this up, you're gonna notice there's a little button right here that says get it free until November 2019. So sometime in November, Twin Motion is going to go paid. However, if you download this right now, as you scroll down, you can see how they tell you that Twin Motion is paid for in November of 2019, but if you download it for free right now, you can keep the version that you download forever. So if you download this and you like it, you don't have to upgrade, this is 100% free. So I recommend clicking on this button right here and doing the free download in order to download that. And so the first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna set up a Epic Games account. So that is also free. Just click on the sign up button in order to do that. And then you're gonna log in. And so when you log in, you're gonna to get to this page and you're gonna to wanna to click on download the Epic Games Launcher. So that is Epic Games Launcher for Unreal Engine and for Twin Motion. You're gonna to wanna to download and install that. There's some instructions down here if you get stuck, but it's fairly simple. Just install the file that it downloads. So when you install and open that, that's gonna pop up the Epic Games Launcher. And you're gonna click on this tab for Twin Motion. You're just gonna to click to install. So that's gonna run in the background. That's gonna download and uh, install Twin Motion. And then once that happens, you should have a button in here that says um, open or something like that. Mine's a little bit different because I'm on a slower internet connection. I had to install or I had to download this away from my house because it would have taken a while for me to download it at my house. But for you, if you install it this way, there should just be a button for start Twin Motion or something like that. All right, so when you first open up Twin Motion, you're going to get a page that looks like this. And this is your welcome page where you can do things like you can either link to little short videos that show you how different things work in Twin Motion. So there's also a button in here for add ins, which is going to take you to the page where you can download like the direct link extension for SketchUp. And then you can also adjust your navigation mode. So there's multiple different modes in here. If you click on this little button right here, they're all slightly different um, and they kind of fit the the way that the various programs work. So like for example, the SketchUp mode, your orbit button is gonna be your middle mouse button, your right button's gonna be look around. If you go to like Revit, you can see how the middle mouse button is the pan button. So you can adjust or select these by clicking the little drop down here. You can also adjust this later. And so if you don't want this window to pop up anymore, you can uncheck this box for show this window on startup. So we're gonna go ahead and close this window. You can adjust this navigation mode later. And so when we first open this up, what I want to do for this video is I want to show you where the example file lives because it's a good place for you to kind of get started and get to know Twin Motion. So if you go up to File, Demo Scenes, and you click on Materials Room, what that's going to do is that's going to load up an example scene of a room with a bunch of different materials in it. And so what we can do is we can now start flying around and looking at the different features of Twin Motion. So I want to start by talking about navigation. So navigation is fairly simple. Um, it's kind of first person view oriented. So like for example, you move using the W, A, S, and D keys. So W, 
and S, move you forward and back, A and D move you left and right, and then you can move up or down by pressing the Q key or the E key. And then you also affect the direction that your camera looks by using your mouse. So for example, if you want to affect where you're looking, you can click and hold the right mouse button and drag in order to adjust where your camera is looking. So if you want to look around without moving your camera, hold the right mouse button. If you want to orbit, hold the middle mouse button. That more orbits your view. You can see how my camera is moving around while, while when I hold my right mouse button, my camera is kind of fixed. And then the left mouse button is gonna allow you to select and edit different things inside of your scene. So like for example, if I wanted to move this around, I can single click on it. And you can see how that gives me this little gizmo in here that you can click and drag in order to move different objects. And I want you to note that one of the cool things about twin motion is as I move this around, your reflections are updating in real time. So it's a real time renderer, which is really powerful. That means you can see your changes as you go. And so I want to walk through a workspace introduction, but the first thing I want to do is talk about your performance. So depending on your computer, this may perform to different levels. So some computers are really powerful. They have nicer graphics cards. Like for example, I have a NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti, and it's a very powerful graphics card. Well, some people don't have that, and so their real-time functions will run a little bit slower. So one thing I would recommend, if that that's the case for you is if you go up to edit preferences you can adjust the quality of the view that you have in here so for example if you if your computer is running a bit slower you can click on this button for medium and you can see how that's gonna set all of your presets to medium so if you have a slower PC you can go to medium or even to low and then when you click OK you can see how your preview is now gonna be much lower resolution and it's not loading a bunch of those things in here like reflections and things like that that they would have been before and that's okay because this real-time mode is really only a preview mode so even though I have this set to the low preview resolution when I actually create a rendering it's still gonna render it at that nice um, good-looking level so for example we'll just export an image real quick I'm just gonna create an image and then we're just gonna export it and we'll talk more about this in a future video but I'm just gonna give you a sample of this I'm gonna export an image so if I open up that sample image that I created and drag this over, you can see how even though my preview is low resolution, the actual final rendering still comes in here and renders out really nice and it looks good. So if you have a slower PC, I would recommend doing an edit, preferences, and turning your quality down. And just know that just because you're seeing this in the viewport with a lower quality does not mean that your final result is gonna be a low quality result. Now let's talk about the workspace and get an idea of where everything is and how everything works inside of Twin Motion. So there's basically four different areas inside of Twin Motion that uh, have different tools associated with them. So I'm gonna click this little arrow button right here so you can see all of them. So there's the left section over here which basically gives you access to all of your libraries of objects including your materials and your background models you've got your actual workspace where you're going to do your work inside of 3d where your view is going to be you've got your bar on the right hand side over here which gives you access to your scenograph which allows you to turn different things on and off so you can adjust and turn on and off different things using the scenograph option this can be especially helpful once you start bringing things in from like SketchUp or something like like that this really gives you the ability to adjust and turn on and off different things so you can see how you can turn your lights on and off all of those different things you can turn them on and off using the scenograph so there's also statistics and transform options that you can access by clicking these little arrows as well and then finally you've got the bar on the bottom of the page which gives which gives you access to things like import and export options camera options landscape options things like that so those in general are going to be the four areas 
that we're going to be working inside of Twin Motion. I will get into all of these in more depth, but I wanted to tell you kind of where they were. And now let's talk through a little bit of just navigating and how we do general things inside of Twin Motion. So, for example, one of the powerful things about Twin Motion is when you bring a model in, you can access model libraries over here and bring other things in really quickly. So, like for example, let's say I wanted to bring a person model in here. So, let's say we brought in like this Alex model. You can can go into your your humans window and you can just click and drag in order to bring these various models in and then you can edit and adjust them you can see how there's different settings associated with things that you select so like for example he has different color presets in here that you can change depending on what you want your view to look like you can also adjust his different animations so you can set if he's sitting or lying down or dancing. There's a whole bunch of different options in here um, for different things that you can adjust when you bring these models in. And Twin Motion has a large library of things that you can bring in. So it's got like trees and landscapes and rocks and all sorts of things like that that you can bring in here. So if you wanted a random rock in here, all you have to do is just click and drag it in. And there's also tools in here for like scattering those, which we will get to in a later video. But in addition, to having models in here, you also have the option to change materials. So for example, you can see how all of these different walls have different materials associated with them. Well, if you click in the materials section, there's a bunch of different materials that you can just drag in and replace different materials really easily. And you can see how when I do this, down at the bottom of the page, a little window pops up that uh, that shows different options for things you can do with this. So you can affect like how reflective this is or or if you have like if you select this block material using the material picker you can adjust the scale of that material as well so you can see how you can adjust all of these things in real time so that's where you're going to access your libraries of different objects on the right hand side you've got access to your scenograph but I also want to draw your attention really quick to the little eye that's right here so the little eye right here allows you to set different things about your view so for example if you click on this eye you can see how if you click on this sun you can adjust in real time the daytime or the time of day using this slider so you can see how that adjusts where your sunlight goes where your shadows go things like that so you can adjust things like that using this little uh, using this little eye there's also an option here to adjust how fast your camera goes so if you want to go slower you can set set it to walk speed if you want to go faster you can set it to drive speed so like for example if I set it to slow you can see how my camera moves really slow if I set it to the car and then do the same thing you can see how my camera moves really fast so you can adjust the speed at which you move around using this button so there's also a number of different preset views in here that allow you to adjust things like you can adjust if you have perspective view or if you want like a top-down view you can see how I could set that um, you can also adjust to left or right so if you want any preset views you can find those in here the clipping is only going to work if you're in a uh, non-perspective view so if I go to a top-down view I can adjust the clipping so I can set my camera to clip out things at a certain level so you can see how this allowed me for example from a straight up and down standpoint to clip out the roof so that I can see the inside of this building so by going to a non perspective view you can adjust the clipping plane in order to kind of cut through your model in order to see different things like I said the scenograph on the right hand side that allows you to turn different things on and off so I can turn like Alex the model on and off I can turn the rock on and off all those different things are over here you can really use the scenograph to organize your different models for rendering. And then there's a second window down here that actually gives you some interesting options as well. So if you uh, click the little arrow right here, this will pop up and this will allow you to set like different phasing options. So you can use this to set if at a certain point, models like the rock and the tree, or the rock and Alex and this model right here, you can turn all of those off and then you can set up a phase where those are off. 
And so you could set up a second phase where those are on so you can save different visibilities. So you can see how right now phase zero has those off, phase one has those on. So you could use this to set up construction visibilities as well. So another thing you might find useful is there's a statistics button in here. The statistics button is gonna show how fast your GPU and CPU are rendering everything. So you can see how this is showing that at the moment I'm rendering at 195 frames per second plus or minus. The thumbs up means everything things going good. Um, if you're rendering really low at like 10 frames per second or something like that, that's usually an indicator that you need to go into your preferences and adjust your quality to something lower so that your PC is going to run a little bit better. And this will also vary depending on how much stuff you have in your model. And so now I wanna talk about the bar at the bottom of the page. So the bar at the bottom of the page is where you're gonna access things like model import. So like this button right here, you would click on it and you can import different models from exterior sources like SketchUp or whatever your 3D modeling program, whatever your 3D modeling program is. So the second option is gonna allow you to change things like context so you can add a background. So for example, we'll just fly outside of this building. Um, you can click on this and you can find one of these preset backgrounds in here you can see how those get added in here as a background so you can adjust that and change that inside of your model using the context button the paths button we're not going to talk too much about right now but basically you can use it to create different paths that think things walk along so let's say I wanted people walking through here you could add a path really quickly so you can see how I added that path. Well, now this is gonna automatically populate people and you can adjust the density level. And obviously I need to move that around this model right here, but you can set up different paths to have people walk in different places using this tool. In the nature section, which is the next section, you can adjust things like placing vegetation and adjusting your lighting. So like for example, for this one, I can adjust how bright my sun is. Um, I can also adjust the way that the light bounces. And also things like my ambient occlusion, which is gonna affect how dark um, things are in the little crevices and corners. So you can see how as I turn this up, those shadow areas get a little bit darker. You can also adjust the white balance of your lighting using the slider right here. So you can also use this to add an ocean. So if you want to add water in here, you could turn the ocean on. So obviously that's probably not the best thing for right here. You can see how I can adjust the height of that ocean by clicking and dragging this up and down. So that's really helpful for more for more uh, external scenes as opposed to internal scenes, but that option is in here as well. So, and then the last two options that are in here are gonna let you export different images. So this is where you're gonna set up your image. The second option is where you're going to export your image. So you set up your images for export, using the media section and then you export them by clicking on this button right here and then selecting your views from that list. So this is where you're going to adjust all of your different settings. So like for example, if I wanted this to be a night view, I would adjust my time of day to more night view in this scene and then I would just update it. So now this scene has a nighttime view settings set in here. So and then finally, there's a couple different tools in here, which we're not gonna talk about too much, but um, you can use them to adjust things in your model. So these allow you to set how your materials get replaced when you drag materials onto objects, as well as how the materials are mapped. But then you can also access tools like the translate and scale tools. So like for example, let's say we wanted this rock to be smaller, what we would do is we could click on it and then you can see if I click and hold on this, a couple options pop up. Well, if I hold the scale tool and then click and drag on this, you can see how you can make this rock larger or smaller by adjusting this. And then the material picker tool allows you to select different materials. So I can really quickly select different materials and edit them in here. And finally, one of the powerful things about Twin Motion is since it's real time, that means you can come in here and you can do things like clicking on these lights and you can adjust the intensity of the lights by clicking and dragging this as well as the color and the different angles in here. So you can see how all of this adjusts in real time, which is why I really love real time rendering. There's not a ton of settings you need to mess around with. You just find the things that you want to work with and then you just change them until you like the way that they look. 
So the one thing I would say is make sure that you go download this today. This is free for a limited time through, I want to say later November. So go ahead and go download it today. If you don't like it, you haven't lost anything. If you do like it, then you got a great real-time rendering program for free. So make sure to use the link in the notes down below in order to do that. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.